All right, guys, I'm going to review this Econet thermostat on a new Ream three stage 17 sear system. So you touch anywhere and it lights up. Um, here's how we toggle between the modes we've got automatic, we've got fan only, and then you can actually. you see there you can adjust the speed of the fan only that's not a feature that we'll ever use because it just adds so much humidity off e-heat I really don't like the way they let uh, that mode be called e-heat sometimes that means like efficient heat or something I just see it might be confusing so that's why I made this little tag here, but that's your normal heat. Uh, service, we can go in this menu and we can see any current alarms, no current alarms. We can see an alarm history. This is just for me installing it. One neat feature is that you can actually tell it. It's got a special set of contacts for a float switch or for a free stat. You can tell it what that is and it comes up here right in the fault history and see here service alerts we got every 12 months it's gonna say service it air filter every six months contact info got our phone number let's put it back in cool settings we can do basic settings here's all our Changeable items and basic settings that any homeowner can change. Of course, time and day colors. You can change the background color. Humidity. I uh, did not enable my dehumidification because I don't want it to lower the fan speed. Schedule vacation. Now, this is where we go to set up the units air handler so you have to tell it what heat kit you have installed you can offset the expansion valve superheat this here is when you tell it what kind of device you have on those inputs you can do float switch you can do shutdown Okay, gotcha. So that's like a free stat. It's got two of those contacts you can do normally closed or normally open. You tell it what kind it is. One of the neat features is if the unit is kind of oversized, you can actually limit the amount of RPM the compressor can ramp to which is kind of neat uh, you can this is one of the things I'm not crazy about is the only airflow adjustment you have is plus or minus 10 percent I guess high low that's what high low means plus 10 percent minus 10 percent they don't give you any ability to adjust the stages separately like let's say you wanted to raise your low or medium speed separately from the high stage speed they don't give you any of that option so I'm not, not too happy about that um, it also doesn't give you any options to control how fast the equipment stages up into uh, the next stage it appears that it will go into high pretty quickly about 15 minutes in low she goes up to high and she almost finishes the call in high and I wish it kind of staged itself back down to run longer um, but you know I'm not sure how it acts when I'm not here and the systems in its more stable state could work a lot better um, okay we did that let's go back the unit just kicked on and now we can go to status which this is one of the coolest parts of this thermostat first screen shows that the thermostat is commanding low cool the inside temp the relative humidity the outside temp all right here 
and what's neat here is we can push air handler and get a whole plethora of information here so the low stage CFM 671 it actually does give us a static pressure reading I have a feeling that that static pressure reading is um, running I guess you could say not taking into account the coil because that's pretty high static pressure for uh, 600 CFMs here you get uh, how many cycles it's done in the last two weeks, how many hours it's ran in the last two weeks, how many cycles in the lifetime. Um, hit more over here. And now we can see exactly where our EXV is being commanded. Our current superheat is 3, which is a little low. We should start to see the EXV close down. We see our suction line temperature. Our su saturated suction temp is found from this number, the suction pressure that's on the coil, the indoor coil. It's running 167.5 and 53 degrees. Now this will start to drop. The unit just came on. <clears throat> let's go back, back, and let's look at the AC heat pump. Again, we get about the same set of uh, cycles lifetime to a weeks and hit more this is our current compressor speed pretty neat crankcase heater temp so this compressor actually has a thermometer or thermistor on the compressor sump so it can detect and correct itself for a flooded condition that's pretty cool on the compressor sump but then again we were just reading three degrees superheat EXV current position. Now this is the outdoor EXV, so it does go to about 100% to let the refrigerant flow in the opposite direction and cool. We have our coil temperature that's used for defrost. Suction line temp. Now this is in cool mode, so right now that's not the suction line. Saturated suction temperature, and then of course it has another transducer in the outdoor unit. So 167.6, 166 166.9, so they're really close. Our superheat's actually dropped and that's an indication of why that compressor sump is low. But yeah, I think that stuff is pretty neat. Thermostat still just calling for low cool. So that was status service. Again, we can go in and look at these codes. Um, I guess I'll show you guys. Let's do a float switch trip. Okay, so it detected it. So it immediately turns the unit off and it tells you right here it's shutting down the cooling. You can hit service and now current alarms is flashing and it says right here float switch trip. And of course this was you know this was uh, this was the code I got when I turned the outdoor disconnect 240 volt missing and then a bunch of float switch trips so I think we'll go ahead and clear those out and the unit shuts down so oh, let's put this back to the home screen service is flashing All right, so we've reset, and the cooling will come back on. So some of the features, 
So I guess we could sum it up. Some of the features I like are the uh, really neat readings you can see from the screen, fault codes, stuff like that. The things I don't like is you cannot adjust the staging and the length of time between the stages, and you cannot adjust the airflow settings separately for the low, medium, and high stages, which I think would be nice to custom tailor each stage to the house and duct system. Fortunately, this is a really small house, so the airflow is not an issue here, but it could, could become an issue um, in some larger houses with some larger sizes. Um, but all in all, the thermostat is not a bad thermostat. It's not too expensive either. And the service um, and the status features are really, really neat to see all this information at the thermostat. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed this Econet thermostat review. And we'll One thing I did notice is I noticed the difference between what this was saying and what I'm reading outside. This is PSIA absolute pressure not gauge pressure so I'm not sure why but I had like a you know about a I would say anywhere from 17 to 20 degree difference or I'm sorry 20, 17 to 20 PSI difference because I'm kind of showing negative superheat on the outdoor unit so just thought I'd point that out that these uh are using PSIA.